So, hi and welcome to this webinar uh, about bridging the gap between database and stream. My name is Per, uh, I'm an entrepreneur and invented a lot of stuff. Uh, I've been working with Java since 1.0. I work here in Palo Alto in California and have my own Java pot, Meanboards Java pot blog with millions of reads. And my name is Emil Forslund. Uh, I am a developer at uh, Speedman, the same company as Per here. And I also live in Palo Alto as a Java developer and I'm the author of the Age of Java blog. And I'd also like to introduce Spire, uh, the official mascot of Speedmans. He is three years old, lives on GitHub, and uh, has lots of open source experience. So whenever you write code that mixes languages and domains, such as Java and SQL, we're going to get problems and bugs. So one solution is, of course, to move away from languages such as SQL and write your own business language, to la language with business-oriented constructs and uh, with Java and streams and predicates and functions. So in this session, you will discover the power of the stream interface in a completely new domain, namely uh, relational databases. You will also see how nicely it blends into with the existing application and with the known modifications of the database layer. So this will increase your productivity and help you build safer and more maintainable Java code. So when we compare the operations between SQL and Stream, we see that there is a remarkable resemblance between the two uh, concepts. For example, you can see uh, the WHERE clause in, in SQL has a correspondence to filter in Stream, and distinct is distinct, skip is offset, limit limit, and count is count. So there are a lot of operations that are directly translatable to SQL. So why do we need to work with two in two domains when we already have the uh, ability to express ourselves when the stream operations? Another uh, similarity is that both the stream and the SQL have the same declarative construct. And what do we mean by that? Yeah, if we look at this SQL query, we say that uh, we want to select everything from film where the rating is PG-13. But it doesn't say anything about how we're going to do it. The database is free to use any means it has uh, to fulfill this requirement. It can, for example, use an index if there is one. Uh, it is the same thing with streams. So a stream uh, actually is also free to do whatever it can to provide those elements requested. So the first line here creates a stream with all the elements from the films. And the second modifies the stream or creates a new stream uh, that only contains those film fulfilling the rating requirements PG-13 here. So it's important to understand that the stream doesn't necessarily stream over all objects from its source. It can modify its source and, and do a more optimized uh, way. So I'm going to switch over now to JShell. And some of you have, might have uh, seen this before, but this is a new great tool that comes with Java 9 that allows us to write Java code and get it evaluated immediately. So, for example, if I write list of and say one, two, three, you'll see that I get a list uh, into an anonymous variable called $10. And for example, if I want to count the number of elements in there, I could write $10.size. And I would get the size of that list, three. So another way uh, that came in Java 8 of counting the number of elements is by using a stream, like this talk is about. So for an example, if I wanted to do that, I could instead say uh, $10.stream.count, and it would give me the same number. I'll say that I have a variable called films. I could create a stream over that table, and I could say uh, count. But now you see not something different here. You see that there is some kind of SQL being printed out here. It says select count star from sequila.film. This doesn't look like a regular Java stream. And that is what this talk today is going to be about. So uh, uh, why did we develop Speedmans? And uh, we, we noticed when we had an old product that creating a new database took hours. Uh, there was a lot of boilerplate ORM code to write. You have to annotate classes, write POJOs, stuff like that. And you have to mix SQL and Java. And when everything of that was ready, it was slow. So that was kind of uh, disappointed. We looked like uh, Duker did. But we decided to do something about it. We wrote an open source product called Speedment, which is pure Java for entire database application, where we have type safety, when we have lazy evaluation of streams, and everything is under a business-friendly Apache 2 license. 
So you can do whatever you want with this code, include it in your own products or play around with it or, and even contribute. I'm very glad to say that we have uh, uh, our supporters all around the world, as you can see in this hot map here. So many of the examples here today are derived from an article I wrote in Oracle uh, Java magazine uh, recently. Uh, and you recognize the table there that I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation. Uh, so let's see a little bit more how it works. Uh, it connects seamlessly to a database and it lazily pulls data in as streams are consumed. And stream, before they operate, they introspect their own pipeline before they start, so it can do all the optimizations. And uh, so, for example, filters and sorted can be moved from the streams pipeline into a SQL query, and everything is done in the background, so you don't have to worry about that. So if you look at this example here that I showed before, uh, we had a stream that was kind of compiled to a SQL query automatically. But these two uh, expressions here are not quite equal because in Java, equal is exactly equal. Uh, so if you have a string, it's, it's case insensitive. So you have, if you write that in your own SQL, you have to add stuff for that. For example, in, in MySQL, you can do like this. And in fact, you don't want to select all the columns because if you have more columns than your data model, model contains, then uh, you wouldn't like to pull in those unnecessarily. So you want to uh, mention all the columns explicitly. And for example, if you sort thing, you have to worry about uh, where do the nulls end up or which order do I sort case sensitive or case insensitive. So it's, it's quickly beginning to be a mess if you work with SQL. But if you look at the stream above, it's still very small and concrete. It says exactly what you want to do. So um, even though you have the SQL query, you still have to pull it into Java. And seriously, how many times have you copied this from the web? At least I have done it several times. We also have lazy evaluation, meaning that only those elements consumed by the stream is actually being pulled in from the database. So if I add a limit here, then only 10 elements will be pulled in from the database. And that is important because in many other solutions, stuff will be pulled into a list that is later consumed, and that is uh, very slow. Another cool thing with Speedman is that it supports parallel execution because Streams has a parallel uh, operation and that parallel operation even works for uh, SQL queries and SQL result sets. So uh, in this example, we will do uh, this expensive operation in separate threads in parallel. And that's good if you have uh, longer running uh, work items you want to do. You could, of course, write your own GDBC executor, but that is, uh, telling from my own experience, very, very tricky to do. But this uh, way, it's very simple to use in the application. Now that you know a little bit more about what Speedman is, I'm going to show you a practical example. So when we left off last time, I showed you a simple stream that resulted in a select count star uh, query that was sent to the MySQL database. So right now, I'm going to clear away this using reset and then I'm going to show you what jshell is importing by default and it's basically as the most common uh, standard Java libraries that you might want to use when you're using jshell and it doesn't contain anything magical so uh, to get speedment up and running in jshell we have prepared a little script that I can import using open and it's called imports so if I run that and then take slash i you'll see that I have a number of new things uh, so first off, uh, I have something called Sakila application. And some of you have heard this before. This is actually an open database that's available online for MySQL. Also, in the bottom, you see that I have imported statically something called a, a main file in this uh, Java 1 presentation. So um, I'm going to use that right now to set up Speedment by basically invoking a static method called start Speedment. So I run that, and boom, you see Speedment is up and running. So you notice in the bottom here that the uh, method returned some kind of Sakila application imp. This is a class that's generated by Speedment automatically, and it's been stored away in a temporary variable called sign ten. So that is how we are going to access the database. So I run a sign ten, and then I say get or throw. So Speedment is modeler, which means that all the, to be able to access a module, we need to uh, access it explicitly. 
So in this case, I want to do something with the film table. So I'm going to retrieve an instance of that. And to avoid having to write these dollar signs all the time, I'm going to store away that in a variable. So I call that film manager films. So like this. So we execute that. And now we have a variable called films. And this is where uh, I started off in the, the last presentation. Um, we had a variable called films. And if I look at that, you see that I have a number of uh, methods available for me. For example, the stream method that I used previously. And if I just count that, I will get the same result as previously. So that is how easy it is to get up and running with Speedmans. It's basically just create the application, get access to the manager, and then start streaming. So now we can do some fun things with this. For an example, we saw that here that there was 1,000 films in a database. But we might only want some of them. So I'm going to add a filter. So I write films.stream and then dot .filter. And now if I were writing SQL, I wouldn't have any kind of help in uh, uh, knowing what columns are available to me. But Speedman generates these for us. So I could just write film, the film class, and then s look at what columns are available uh, and see that there are, uh, for example, something called a rating. So I'm going to say rating dot, and then I can see what operations I can do on that. So this time I'm just going to do equal, and then I'm going to say, well, I want it to be equal to rating, let's say, PG-13, like this, and then count. And now I know that there are 223 movies in the database that has the PG-13 rating. And you can also see up here the SQL query that this resulted in, and this is not something that I at least would like to write manually. So if I were to like say, okay, this time I want to see the R rating movies, I could do it like this. But of course, it's a bit inconvenient to be able to, to have to write the almost the same query multiple times. And this is where Java really shines. Because in Java 8, we got access to uh, not only streams, but also something called collectors. So uh, to be able to access those, I first need to import them. So I'm going to do a static import uh, from the Java util streams and then a uh, collector with an s on the end and then dots star and now i have access to all the standard collectors by default so if we take the same query we had previously with the rating uh, instead of doing filter uh, on the rating i'm going to do a collect with one of the co standard collectors so we're going to write collect and then grouping by film rating. And if I just terminate the stream right now, you notice that I, uh, oh, I need to enter a method reference. So we'll take getter here, something like this. Now I've grouped all the movies on ratings, but you notice that these are not counts. These are actually actual movies that are returned by the database. So I need to add a second parameter to the grouping by, uh, and that's also a collector called counting. And now I have a nice Java hash map that shows me how many movies are in each category. And we can take this one step further. So I removed the filter earlier, that uh, filter on rating, but I can add another filter. So for example, I can write filter and then say film.description.contains uh, because I want to find movies that contains a particular keyword. And I want it to be case insensitive, so I write uh, ignore case. Uh, and then I enter the keyword. So in this case, I want to search for the keyword red somewhere in the description. And here we see a much smaller set. We see that uh, only movies uh, that have the keyword red are returned. And uh, there are nine, for example, R rated, there are 10 NC17 rated, and so on. Uh, let's look at another stream here that says film stream, where a filter rating equals PD13, and another filter with length greater than 75. And then I count all the items. So the stream here is nothing special with Speedman. It's a standard API that comes with Java 9 and Java 8. And the filters here are fully, fully type safe. So um, the rating, for example, you can't enter an integer or a string or something. It must be uh, the, the, right, the right type. Same with the length filter must be an integer in this case. And when you do the count, the cool thing is that only one value is loaded from the database. It doesn't uh, collect the films in Java. Everything is done on the database side in this example. So how is that possible? Well, first, uh, in MySQL, we're going to get this query. But, but if you have another database, 
it could look, look like a completely different uh, thing like this in Postgres and in Oracle or if we look in the third way. But we don't have to care. We only work with, with the streams and then let Speedman worry about how to compile them to, to SQL. So this is how it looks like. We have a stream from the beginning and by the pipeline and there is a tentative source that selects everything from the film. And then we have two filters and we have a terminating operation called count. So just before the count is uh, executed, the, the stream will introspect it, its own pipeline and it will see that if I modify the source and introduce this where clause, I could remove the filter from the stream. And if I additionally do another addition with and length greater than 75, I could remove the second filter. And if I remove the columns in, and instead of write count star, then I can remove the counting operation too. So effectively, the entire pipeline has been collapsed to just one single SQL statement. And it's just a result from that that's pulled into Java. Well, now some of you might think, is this really uh, legit to do? And the, the, case, the, the truth is yes, because this is something that the, the designers of the streams has predicted from the beginning. For example, if you look in the Java 9 docs for peak, which is typically a side effect operation, then they said uh, in case the stream impl implementation is able to optimize away the production of some of all the elements such as short circuiting operations uh, for example in count uh, the action will not be invoked for those elements so this is really a thing that's been taken care of from the beginning in the design of streams suppose that we have the old stream and when we enter map get title for example that extracts just a title for a stream and then we sort them and then we count them we can still do the same optimization because map only changes the type of the elements in the stream, not the count. And sorted only changes the order of the elements, not the count. So they can too be optimized away just like that. And that is cool. Uh, and then one thing you have to remember when you do uh, optimization is that you must use the, the predicates obtained from the, t from the columns. Uh, Speedman will not be able to optimize away anonymous lambdas like the one in the bottom here. Uh, but the, 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 the lambda factories are very convenient, so you, you have a bunch of them built in from the beginning. So now you might be wondering, how did we set up this? So that's what I'm going to show you in this third example. So I, I mentioned that we have a, f a database called Sakila, and that's an open database over uh, films and uh, actors and so on, and it's all generated. So um, if we just take a look at how the database looks, you can see that uh, it has a film table, it has an actor table, a category table, and so on and so on, with a number of different columns of different types. So what Speedman does with this is that we connect to the database using a graphical tool, we extract the schema metadata, and then we use that to generate Java code. You know, all these uh, entity classes and the columns that you saw in the example. So uh, when we look at the generated code in our IDE, we will see something like this. We will have a package for each uh, table in the database. And in that package, we will have uh, interfaces for film and film manager that allows you to model the, uh, the different entities and that allows you to obtain the streams. But we will also have implementations of those interfaces which enables you to write your own implementation if there is something you want to change. For example, override the method. So I'm going to show you now uh, how to set up the product from scratch so you can do it for yourself. So if we go to speedman.com and scroll down a little bit, you might see that we have something called an initializer. And this is similar to how many other open source products uh, make it easy for you to get started. By pressing that, I get an interactive tool where I can set up my product. So I'm going to select that I have a MySQL database. I'm uh, very happy with this JDBC version, and uh, I want to get this uh, a product using these settings. So I can just switch to the palm.xml file and then copy the contents of this file. And this will give me the entire product setup for building a product with Speedman. So if I now switch back to my IDE, I can create a new product, select the Maven Java application. I'm okay with the default name. And then I expand the product files palm.xml and enter the input from that file. 
So we pause for a second to just take a look at what was generated for us here. Um, we have a group ID, an artifact ID, to be able to set up the basic main uh, Maven products. We then have a Speedment version, and this is always the most recent released Speedment version. Currently it is 3.0.15. Then we have a, a dependency section, which gives us the MySQL connector for be able, being able to connect to the MySQL database, and a Speedment runtime dependency. And this is the important part, because this is what enables us to get the, uh, the optimized stream in our runtime. And I must also point out that it's important to have type POM because Speedment is built in a modular fashion, which means that there's actually multiple dependencies uh, that contains very specific uh, sets of functionality. So to not have to list all of the dependencies of Speedment that we're using, uh, we can get the, uh, a pre-bundled version using the type POM here. Also, uh, we have a Maven plugin, and this is called the Speedment Maven plugin which allows us to uh, connect to the database and generate the code when we, um, during compile time. So to be able to launch that, I have to select my product and I can then see in NetBeans that uh, the Maven goal is showing up here. And this is corresponding to just writing MVN speedment colon tool on the command line. So I double press the uh, speedment tool and this will launch the, uh, the speedment Maven plugin. It open over here. So I'm going to sh change this to a MySQL database. I'm happy with the local host, uh, but I want to use the username Sakila uh, user, the Sakila password, and then just the, uh, the database name of Sakila. So connect. And it opened over here. So we take that into here. You'll see that when the Speedman tool launches, I have a, a, a view of the database on the left side, where I can see all the tables and the different columns that has been um, read from the database. When on the right side, I have different settings that I can uh, configure if I want something to be a little bit different from the default settings. But right now we're happy with the defaults and just press generate. And so it has generated 237 files. So I can close down the Speedman tool and then if I open up the source packages in the IDE, you will see that I now have uh, populated it with generated files. So I have the Sakila application and the different tables uh, in the Sakila uh, library. So let's continue here. Uh, when you create your Speedment application, uh, the, the, the Speedment tool that Emil just showed will create the Sakila application builder and a Sakila application. So usually the only thing you have to do is to enter the password because Speedment never stores the password in, in its configuration file. This also uh, provides a means to configure your product uh, programmatically if you want to do that, uh, if you have special demands. Then we get the field manager, just the way Emil showed before in the JShell demo. So this is the only thing you have to do to start Speedment. Then you can start using the film's streams. So these classes are generated automatically and this is a builder pattern to really uh, be able to create uh, your application. And a manager class is generated for, e for every database table that you can use in your application. Uh, it's also very easy to integrate with Spring. This shows a conf Spring configuration class, which really creates a Speedment instance. And here we have a parameterized uh, the username, password, and schema from the database. And you can see how easy you can uh, integrate them into a Spring application like this, shown here. Then you can just bean uh, annotate your managers. And once you've done that, you can just auto-wire them into your application. So it's really short code in your uh, controllers or your own code. And here is a complete uh, REST API in Spring that would provide a page uh, from a films so you can enter a page and the page has the 50 by default and you can uh, select a rating and which page number you want to use and then this Speedman stream here will return a stream of those films and Spring will take care of everything and just render it to, to a JSON uh, page here. It's very uh, convenient. So you can see that we we'll filter out the rating or equal to the rating we, we gave and then we sort them in, in length order and we just skip to the page we are and just show the amount of 
items that are supposed to fit into one page. So this shows how really small and compact and expressive uh, your SpeedMet application can be. So this is of course rendered to SQL in the background. You don't have to see this, but it's rendered to an efficient SQL query. In this case, if it's MySQL, it looks like something like this. If you call it with PG-13, and uh, you know, this is the 10th uh, or 9th page, depending on how you count them. Cool. So there is actually also a Spring plugin available in open source version. So it generates all these controllers and setups for you automatically. So you can just use Spring uh, directly. Uh, you can also do one-to-one, one-to-many relations, uh, joins, uh, also using filter. In this case, we use a flat map way to do that. Uh, you can use CRUD operation with streams, where you can do updates of, of items using streams. In this example, we stream over every language with the name called Deutsch, and then we change them to German and apply the language updater for each one. And that corresponds to the SQL statement basically shown uh, below here. So there's a lot of flexibility built in with the stream uh, interface. Another cool thing with SpeedMent is when you do your JUnit testing of your application, uh, you can just plug in your own stream supply component, so you don't have to really connect to a database. You can provide your own stream source, very useful for testing. And uh, you can get SpeedMent today. Just go to GitHub and clone it or download it or use it in your application. Uh, this is how you do, as Emily showed, you only have to have one dependency. This is the Maven, Speedmet Maven plugin to be able to use the tool and code generator. And this is the actual runtime dependency. The runtime de dependency does not depend on any other uh, things like Guava or uh, JS uh, Jackson or something like that. It's a standalone uh, thing that you can have without the uh, conflicts of different versions. So it's no transitive dependencies on other libraries. Here's the initializer, also that ML show, uh, very easy to use. Uh, you can see what kind of databases that are supported there. There is also an in-memory accelerator, if you are interested in that. Uh, this is how easy to use. Uh, you have a selected database, and you have the tool, press generate, and you have all the code. Simple as one, two, three. Uh, so you generate code. You write your own logic, and then if it, you run the application, and if the data model changes, you just iterate and go back to step one. There are also some Maven tools that allows you to do this automatically without the GUI. So, Sp Speedment open source converts streams to SQL automatically. Uh, the streams are lazy. They only pull in what's ever consumed by the stream. It's type safety. You, you can't write uh, diff the wrong types in your, in your streams. And you can use parallel streams uh, with a very simple notation. And everything is pure Java and supports Java 9. So that's all for this uh, presentation. Uh, we hope to see you on GitHub. Or you can, uh, if you want to talk of, to me or Emil or anyone else here on SpeedMent, uh, make a booking on Calendry, and we'll set up a private uh, conversation with you. And thanks for listening. Bye.